Alexa, what is today? Today is Thursday, September 14th. That means it's Vlog Thursday. Vlog Thursday. Yay! And we got one of these cool listening devices in our office because we weren't sure enough people were listening to us and we ought to make sure the government can too. Right, and you, you ask her, hey Alexa, do you work for the government? Oh, she clammed up on us. Clammed up on us. <laughs> Alexa, do you work for the FBI? No, I work for Amazon. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> so the best part of this is tell them where you got this, Tom. At a security company. <laughs> That, kids, is what we call irony. Yes. <laughs> Had a great meeting. Uh, you can look them up. They're an interesting uh, group of guys, group of gals, what, group of people, group of security professionals. Yes, human mm -hmm. beings. A great group of they human are beings. human beings and a couple of them, maybe AI systems in disguise because they were really good. <laughs> <laughs> a uh, cybersecurity company called CBI, and uh, they're local, they're big, they do security response and breach and all that stuff. And sometimes you got to know your own limitations, and mm. that's part of the reason sometimes I like to meet with other companies like that, because uh, there comes a point where there may be some breach responses that happen and things like that that you need some outside help for, because there's lots of legal navigation to do. And so I had a meeting with them to talk about all those mm -hmm. fun things that occur. Because here's the fun part. You know, Lay I, it on us, Tom. I need a marker, but we'll just pretend I have one. Okay. Marvin knows where I'm going with this. I do, yeah. We need tubes and markers. Tubes and markers. Just put the clip of our previous video in there. Yeah. Yeah. So security is obviously a big topic right now, especially since, you know, about 140 million people, you know, big database, little company called uh, Equifax. And uh, yeah, I mean, got... hey, listen, as long as you don't have credit cards, a mortgage or a car payment, you're probably fine. Yeah. As long as you, you know, the people who have no credit at all are celebrating going, ha ha, not me. <laughs> Poor people for the win. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Bad credit, no credit? Sweet. <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. And in and, and jokes on them, they're offering free credit monitoring. Jokes on them, I already have a credit free from another company that got breached and yeah, lost all yeah. my data. Yeah, right? Ha ha. Ha ha. Like a hipster, I was doing it before it was cool. I had my data breached before you guys. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's Anyways. thinking about the security now. And, well, and uh, then there's the ones that aren't. And that's what we're going to talk about real yeah. quick here. So I, I don't know the exact uh, truth of this story, but I like mm. the story the way so we're going to tell it and mm. how it relates to what I'm going to talk about next. Yeah. Citizen journalism. Citizen journalism. <laughs> it's probably wrong, so you can stop here if you care about the facts. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, no, this concept is a psychology con uh, concept that was used, I was told, as I heard, on how they got people to leave during disasters was they said, oh, you should leave, there's an impending disaster coming, and when the person would say, no, I plan to stay here, they would pull out a marker and hand them the marker. They said, please take this and write name and phone number on each of your limbs so when we come back later after the disaster passes through your area, we can put all the body parts together and know who to call gruesome. and let them know. Gruesome. Yeah, it's gruesome. That's but, what you needed them. I thought you were going to do the VPN demonstration again. Oh, yeah, that was fun but, too. Yeah, VPNs but, with ink pens. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no, so it's one of those concepts, and that's kind of where we're, you know, it's not a scare tactic. It's We have some clients that are in clear violation of the rules that govern them, perhaps, and they decline updating security. They have firewalls that are 10 years old that were like, you know, right now I did do a vulnerability scan and there's currently no CVEs for this particular firewall, but there's also no more updates for it because it's reached end of life from there. You should really replace it because you have lots of things in your network that are very important to you and your clients. And lots of them have the attitude of we're too small to get hit. I'm like, okay. And it still works, Tom. And then they get hit. It's still working. It's though. still working. Why do I need to replace it? Yes. It's working. Yes. And some of them aren't our clients. We came in because we were called from a uh, place regulated under HIPAA compliance, and they uh -oh. have a whole bunch of stuff that's way, way outdated. Mm. And it, they get 100, not, not gigabit, 100 megabit switches, which is part of the problem. They The switching infrastructure and the firewalls are that old that they're only 100 meg. Yeah. <laughs> like, you, they are, they're not to mention, the, they bought them at Best Buy undoubtedly because of the brand it is. The, I'm like, yeah. The switch had a Save by the Bell sticker on top of it. <laughs> Oh. From the mid-90s. 
Uh, so we want to make sure, and if these, if something worse happens to these clients, um, for them after they decline it, that we've got some type of uh, plan. Now that plan, it sounds like that's a cool contingency. I'll mm. just have some breach team come in. Be prepared because you could be upwards of seventy thousand dollars with these people. I mean, seventy thousand. Yes, as opposed to you know us charging less than a thousand to replace that firewall, far under a thousand to replace that firewall. Uh, you know, it puts something decent in, um, or we'd recommend even something better in intrusion production and all the whole thing. But yeah, to think that they want to decline everything and keep their you know twelve year old firewall still in place, we just want to make sure that they also have another plan. It's kind of psychology. It's not, we're trying not trying to scare them, but we're trying to make sure they understand this seriousness of this. It's not just Equifax and large companies like Target. When they get hit, when they get breached, we hear about our news. There are a ton of small companies constantly breached. And it's it's a uh, it's a problem that's getting bigger and bigger. And it's something we've talked about it. I've actually uh, had a lot of conversations with a lot of security people I know. And that leads me to my next project. Mm. How'd they get hacked? How did they get hacked? How did they get hacked? So mm. I first bought the domain, <laughs> then I got to put a website up. But I haven't a, done it yet. That's a hobby Tom has. He just buys domains. Buy domains. Uh, but I want to. I want to compile stories, and the stories, you know, uh, protect the innocent. We're not going to reveal any names or anything in there. But I know a lot of security professionals, and uh, I want more of them to help participate in this. I love a lot of the breakdowns and the details for how they get hacked. There's places like Krebs and Security, and a lot of others out there who do great uh, details on some of those. But I would like a more consolidated place that exclusively dedicates to the stories of all those. Because I found on Reddit some really interesting stories. Uh, sysadmins have shared of how things went wrong in their network, you know, when hackers got in and how they got crypto lockered. And, you know, one of them was just a overlooked, misconfigured firewall rule, which then someone had set the backup to, like, backup, backup as the username and password because they were testing. <laughs> and then they forgot after they were done it's testing really, yeah. to change the password again when they're trying to solve something. Those little things happen. Uh, but it's like those couple calamities of one person on the firewall team. This is a bigger company that did the breakdown. And then finding out someone else on the backup team, you know, that was supposed to be responsible for this. I mean, it's a coincidence, yeah. But it was the way they got in. And the mm -hmm. hacker then held them ransom. He locked up everything. Um, but then also agreed if they paid the ransom, because the hackers like to respond and reply. Mm. And, and you've seen my text messages thing. That was great. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they like to reply <laughs> sometimes. And so the hacker agreed that if they paid the ransom, he'd say how he did it. <laughs> Tell you how I did it if you give me your money. Yeah, and they kind of, they, they, well, because he encrypted the backups and because uh, he had the backup well, admin. And it's kind of like a double edged sword, too. Right? Like, you're going to give me your money and I'm going to show you how easy it was for me to do. Yeah, and it was, I they, mean, they thought it was something more sophisticated. Yeah. And it really was just a oops on a firewall rule that opened up remote access in an area it shouldn't have. And a backup, back, I think it was just like backup, backup was the username password for the backups, which of course led him right to encrypting the backups, which put them mm. in the, the perils that they were in. Yeah. Because the hacker, when he got in, did not immediately just shut them down. It's about, oh, you know, they waited, encrypted backups. Mm -hmm. They made sure they were playing with a lot of things before they released sure. the ransomware. So they made a big mess of their network. Uh, they got a lot of it back. But those kind of stories and, and getting into some of the details, I think would be cool to all have in one place. Mm -hmm. uh, because understanding those stories makes us think differently about how we should apply security. And I want it to be a resource because some of the, you know, when you meet some of these guys who work, what they refer to as like red teams, where they do some of those pen testing, um, not just, they usually reveal the results to the company. Well, they do reveal the results to the company to home, like this is how we reach the company. But having some of that knowledge as opposed to just, well, you should follow these guidelines and here's a really long thing. But talking about this is what went wrong, I think would be very valuable to the security community, um, you know, just in, in concept. Because the sophistication is getting so much faster or so much better and mm. faster. And um, we've dealt with a few of them ourselves that we like, wow, they sent personal emails and things like that to impersonate. Wait till the owner of the company was on vacation, impersonated them while they were on vacation with a completely plausible email to do a money transfer for a vendor they met. I mean, it's it's got all the personal mm. details in it too. It's not just a, hey, send money and you can spot it as a scam. No, they impersonate them. So uh, you gotta gonna, almost admire it really. Yeah, the love association, <laughs> which leads you to the text message uh, thing. And I found this on Reddit and I thought it was great, but it was one of those, it was a, a scam link to a bank and 
uh, the person replied right away, like, do people really fall for the scam? And the, the person sending out the scam said, they said, yeah, like 15% of the people that have a phone also probably bank at this bank. And they go, why don't you get a real job? He goes, I can't find a job that pays me $20,000 a week. Now, the $20,000 was in Australian dollars. It's on my Twitter. Yeah, uh, but it, still. But still, it's... That's it's, I think that works for like sixteen thousand, probably uh, US something like week. that. Yeah, on yeah, my phone to do the conversion. Yeah. but still, <laughs> that's a sizable amount of money to send emails. <laughs> and it's not like there's one solution to this. There's a, it's a tiered solution. It's user training combined with, you know, uh, making sure all the firewall rules right and everything else. But you know, thinking about the level of sophistication and it's hitting small businesses really hard. But no one talks about it because when a small firm or small, uh, you know, law office or something like that gets hit locally. We come in, we'll clean something up. That's it. There's not where do I put that story, and you know share it with people. They, they went through some sophistication, and uh, it's kind of devastating to small business. Obviously, it's devastating to Equifax. This happening, but yeah, you know they have more money to throw at it. And these small businesses just assume if it's not in the news, they're not hitting us. And right. It's such and when a it problem. does hit them, they don't want to put. They don't necessarily want that out there. That's why you have to change the names. And you're, uh, you know, in this because Target's going to be okay. Target gets hit. You're still going to go shop there. Yeah, because I mean that's just how that's going to work. But you know, if my uh, if my attorney or my you know, CPA or somebody gets hit and my information gets out, well, I'm probably not going to use them anymore. Yeah, you know, and that makes a difference. Yeah, so it's really it, it's hitting the small businesses really hard right now. And I think people don't realize that. So um, my is to raise awareness with both you know anyone who wants to read the stories and the stories are probably going to be very interesting of how mm. some of these hacks occurred. Uh, so I'm hoping to get that rolling up here pretty quick. Uh, probably I'm, some fun graphics and pictures too. Fun graphics and pictures. Yeah, yeah keep, and I, I want to do a combination of interested. some stories and a lot of video because I want to actually sit down and do interviews with some of the uh, people who've worked on the security side of it, so we can have fun discussion about it and uh, hopefully enlighten people on all the stuff going on in that. Learning, learning new stuff. Get some learning stuff yeah. going. Uh, other things going on. I'll be gone at Microsoft not this week, but next week. Because Florida is still there, so Florida that's survived, good news. So. so they sent me a plane ticket to yeah. go down there. So hope everybody in Florida and in Houston are are digging out or swimming out or whatever you do. Whatever that whatever um, was on you know, down there. Good luck to you, and we're pulling for you. So me and the whole uh, Sunday morning Linux review team. Well, not the, all of us. One of us can't make it, but uh, me, Tony, and Mary will be down there. Wait, so you interviews. have an open slot, and you didn't ask me to go, dude? Dude, you don't you know did, Linux. I, but I'm. <laughs> I'm learning, though. That's This is an opportunity. Uh, it's, it's yeah. Professional development, Tom. Professional this is, development. This is unacceptable. Now I'm upset. They had to struggle to get us the three tickets. Cause no, they didn't. They're Microsoft. No, they did. <laughs> Well, they, well, they make it dramatic to us. I don't know if they're really struggling. They, 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 no, they, that's Mike. They're struggling. They're not struggling. <laughs> Whatever. So, like, a, yeah, that's coming up. That's um, cool, though. I that's very cool. I did produce a ton of video at the Build Conference, but I was really, the Build Conference was only a couple days, and we were really back to back doing all the interviews. Uh, we're there for more time, uh, so I'm going to be doing a lot of video down there, and I want to interview some of the Microsoft people and talk about a few things, and that's going to be a lot of fun, so I'm kind of excited about all mm -hmm. that. While Tom's away, who knows what shenanigans we'll get up to here. I know. Steve wanted to buy a pirate hat because he's going to be running around yelling, I'm the captain. That's that's on his list. <laughs> I am the captain now. <laughs> oh, for the love. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see how that's that goes. That's going to happen. It probably will. It probably, will he have the eye patch? And the, you know what? I'll give him a peg leg. He starts uh, running around saying, I'm yes. the captain. He gets a peg leg. Yes. <laughs> um, I am... Almost done with uh, some virtualization changeover stuff, so we're doing some upgrades here internally with our infrastructure, which is also why I'm going to be doing a Zen server review. I've tried a lot of different things. I kind of like the Zen server, so this weekend, if uh, nothing else comes up, I'll probably do the whole migration over there. Plus, I'll do a whole video on the migration and how it works and all kinds of fun details, because why not do both? I'm doing the work and documenting the work yeah. uh, on video. Yeah. So. Yeah, we tried a couple of uh, new things out this past week. We tried that. Uh, oh man, I might do a review on it. Slidey thing that it's a good concept. I just yeah, it, it wasn't terribly. There's yeah. like one. There's one feature of it where it's like if you just hadn't done this, it would be awesome. Watch a review on it. It's yeah, you'll the, see. It. Look it up. It's called the Ergo Slider. It's really yeah. interesting. They sent us one, and I told them we're not just going to do a demo. We're going to do a multiple person demo on it. Yeah. So, um, kind of show you how it works. It's interesting. I, I I don't know. I type different, so uh, that'll be a separate video. Yeah, maybe that's um, it. We tried the uh, that alternative to Slack. Well, yes, and um, so you guys talked, uh, Matter Most was one we talked about last week, and then mm -hmm. there was Rocket Chat. Someone suggested, thank you for the suggestion, Rocket Chat has a wonderful web interface. I really liked it. Um, and I the, was their, shocked. Their mobile app isn't bad if you use an iPhone. 
It seems to work better on the iPhone <laughs> than the Android. Uh, but us getting messages was yeah. just bad, mm. and the app just didn't work very good at all. Uh, the channels would randomly show up, and it would decide occasionally it wouldn't want to show the chat history when you close yeah. the app until you logged out, logged back in. Mm. Now, this is really odd because we got it up and running, which was easy. I may do a video on it. Uh, it's almost not worthy of doing a video. It was so easy. I used their Snap package and uh, got it set up. Then it's got an installer to install Let's Encrypt certificates right in it, so that was really easy to do as well. So all those things are pluses with it. And follow their instruction, like, wow, this only took me a few minutes to get, a, you know, get it up and running, configured with an SSL cert. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Then came uh, try to use the mobile app, and that's mm -hmm. unfortunately is a big hang up for us. We do a lot of it because my people are out in the field, I'm out in the field, and Slack messages are our favorite way to communicate while we're out in the field. It's like, hey, I plugged this in, can you check the log and see if this or that occurred? And it just doesn't work fine for me. Yeah, but it seems to work on the iPhone. That's one <laughs> puzzle we had, it worked on the iPhone. These guys are like, it's not working, I can't see this, and I'm just like, boop, message. <laughs> yeah, so Worked. we may visit Rocket Chat again later if there's an app update, but it, uh, the problems with the app appear to be common because there's yeah. plenty of feedback and they don't have very good rating in the App Store. So um, I did. I looked up Mattermost. I never got around to installing it, but the app had um, same thing. Didn't look good, so I'm kind of like, eh, yeah. we're going to try an alternative. Google is working on coming out with theirs. They scare me a little because they How does they're, Google not have something already? Hold on. Let's well, talk about that because right here I have my uh, my Google Allo, and then we got what was the other one they had? They we get Hangout still, but it's deprecated. Yeah. And Hangout, then there's um, 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 there's another one. They, anyway, Google has a few of them, hmm. and none of them are clear. There's not a roadmap. They I think they're working on something that looks like a Slack competitor. I don't know where they're going with that. Uh, we do enjoy Hangouts. Hangouts actually work really well. But I, I've heard rumors that that's going away, and so do you build anything on top of that? Yeah. yeah I know. The, the video works really well on it, so I'm like, eh. You know, I prefer something open source, but it comes back to I need an app that works. And Slack does the job, uh, so we're sticking with Slack for now. This is a quick change of, of subject, but it, it's a good segue off of Google. Maybe you know this, Tom. So. Uh, on the, you know, on the side, I do some writing, and I belong to a writer's group. And we were discussing last night that somebody said that they had heard that if you write anything in Google Docs, Google owns the rights to that thing. No. I didn't think so. Yeah. From what I could read, it was uh, they, they have the right to use what you upload and store in there to better their product and promote their product, but they don't own it. They're not allowed to use or see the text you write. Yeah, okay. So they have... I'm pretty sure I understood that. Yeah. They that can't see or use it. Um, that, that's where there's some convolution that comes in on rights to things like uh, the voice. Because a lot of people are like, oh, Microsoft's using um, the voice for telemetry. That became the big deal. And as much as uh, normally I would jump on the Let's Bash Microsoft bag, and I'm a much more rational person on things that don't make any sense, like that. Like, yeah, they kind of have to send telemetry back in order to do the voice recognition uh, to make sure the words were coming out of your mouth in a way right. I can understand. So. Right. Well, with everything going to cloud, everything is going to be in the cloud. I mean, every, apps, everything. Like, you can't have... If, the, if that were the case, then Google and Microsoft would own every single thing that's ever going to be written from here on out. Yeah. <laughs> and that's so, just not going to happen. There's so. so... Yeah, there's so much confusion that goes around all that. So that's but definitely if more everybody, If everybody read their terms of service, they would know. I mean, I read every single terms of agreement that I get. Yes. So, and, and, and comes back all the way around. We're putting a cloud. We need to think about security on it and everything else. Yeah, terms and conditions. I, I don't read that. I, my video is rather popular about that because right away, so, you know, we were trying to sort out the whole Equifax uh, breakdown. Yeah. And I'm like, someone had pointed out, and uh, it, we, I right away did a video on it because I'm like, this is BS before everyone runs and signs up. So I shared this on my with my Facebook friends too. I'm like, the terms and conditions, apparently, you opt out of being able to sue Equifax mm -hmm. on this. And so, yeah. If you uh, if you get their free credit monitoring, you you opt out. And all their free credit monitoring is, from my understanding, is every couple of months they'll give you your credit report, <sighs> which you can you are entitled to ten of like every right, isn't it ten every year? I think something it's like one of the, that. There's a law now that says you're entitled to get your credit report free so many times a year. So they're providing you for free a service that you can do for free. They're so, not actually monitoring. Um, transactions and stuff that could be happening, really. They're not doing that. Krebs on security is one of my favorite uh, 
good security blogs to read. He has some amazing articles on there. And um, I'll link below the the title of his uh, <laughs> for his Equifax one. Mm -hmm. This is the dumpster fire of Ex uh, Equ Equifax's dumpster fire of a response or something like that. It's a great read about everything that went wrong. Something triggered Alexa. Mm -hmm. It's, I said dumpster fire and Alexa got excited. Oh, it was probably heard fire. Oh no, she's gonna think something's fire? on fire. Fire. Fire? No. no okay. Anyway, <laughs> and the dumpster fire that is Equifax. That's 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 accurate though. That is accurate. Yes. So yeah. that yeah, that's definitely crazy. Um, there's a lot of things going wrong. I, it, we're gonna hold off until there's a full debrief because I'd love and hopefully they do a good breakdown because Equifax being in the light that they are of everything wrong. Now we don't know, and I don't know if this is a claim or we actually know this for certain. Uh, they're claiming there was a vulnerability. The problem is that the software that they claim is vulnerability, and there was multiple, but some were patched and some weren't. So. Hmm. When did it happen? Why did it take Equifax so long to know someone was inside their database? There's so many questions we want answered about this. I believe Krebs will probably have the first reports on that um, hmm. coming out. So yeah, it's it's really. Uh, I have the answer. Aliens. Aliens. Aliens did it. Every time, it's always aliens. Aliens. Yeah, <laughs> aliens stole our social security numbers. You know, someone did ask me because <laughs> they, they, that's how they actually fuel their ships is they, with social security numbers. Yep. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> um, here's something interesting in, in lieu of this. Now, there's uh, there's some companies that keep pricing uh, notices. And a lot of security companies internally do this. And I'm trying to remember the name. There's, there's a couple places you can Google it. Uh, they keep prices of things on the dark web. So I've talked a little bit before about the dark web. And one of the prices they have right now is what it what social security numbers are going for. And apparently this Equifax feature is just killing the market for these things because <laughs> supply and price, demand, right? It's it, flooded it, the market. Literally supply and demand. And they haven't hit the market yet, but when they do, <laughs> like this is this is changing the, the market dynamic for the value of a social security number. So what the, what are the chances that this will actually be like a good thing and people will stop buying social security or that, selling, selling social security numbers because it's not worth it? Yeah. What's, what's that what's that meme? The the one you know, when everyone's something and oh. then no one is. When everyone yeah. is, no one is. Yeah. It's actually, when yeah. everyone's hacked, no one's hacked. Right. I mean, it's yeah. Kind of, <laughs> this, could, this could turn out to be the best. You know, thanks, Equifax. Yeah. Thanks. This could turn out to be great. You guys are heroes. You're not use security numbers anymore. Yeah. That's a great idea. That's Which, fantastic. We shouldn't, anyways, you should not have anything like that. We should be using some type of uh, public private key crypto, but it's mm. an entirely another discussion, which I thought about making a video about of uh, how we should be doing it. Mm. But mm -hmm. that said, all this stuff, just so you know, does end up on the dark web. That's generally where this stuff goes and will be sold and parsed and, yeah. We need to talk about the dark web sometimes. Get, yeah. Uh, get get under, familiar with it. Get an understanding, understanding for people, yeah. The dark web and Bitcoin. Though just can't wrap my head around Bitcoin. Bitcoin and dark web. And the two things kind of go hand in hand. Yeah, but I just, it, I just can't. Get anyway. Get anywhere. Around I just it. can't get my head around Bitcoin. Every time I think I understand it, somebody says something different, and I'm like, ah, son of a. Yeah, we got to do the Bitcoin discussion. Yeah, got to bring Martin Alexa. Up. What's Bitcoin? Thank you. You've been helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Alexa, <laughs> what's the current price of Bitcoin? As of about two hours ago, one Bitcoin was three thousand five hundred seven U.S. dollars and thirty nine cents. There you go. Where can I just find? I just want a Bitcoin. That's all I want. Is you just a want Bitcoin. three thousand dollars. A Bitcoin. That's what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> Do I have it on my phone, maybe? Maybe my watch has a Bitcoin. All right. All right. We'll With see that, you. we're, we're going to done. And yeah. uh, if you like the content here, like and subscribe. More videos coming and all that fun stuff. See you next week. See you next week. <laughs>